choose pincer. Do bring them back. That's right, sir. You bring them back, and I'll give you the name of my chiropodist. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. I shall be in my chair, Mr. Humphreys, if you require me. That's right, Mr. Granger. You're going to have 40 wings. Yeah, <laughs> sit and dream about the great trouser sale of 1938. <laughs> Anyway, I said, look, Mother, you come and stop with me for a week and perhaps my dad will have come to his senses. Oh. She, well, she arrived. The first thing she does is complain about the sleeping arrangements. You mean she didn't like the settee? No, she took exception to my canopied bed. <laughs> <laughs> the cheek of it. I know. The lace alone cost a hundred pounds. <laughs> and she wouldn't put her teeth in the cut glass goblet. <laughs> And to cap everything, as soon as she'd had her bath and put her curlers in, she insisted on sitting behind the curtains looking at the neighbour. <laughs> and I bet they all thought it was you. <laughs> I shan't share my confidences with you if you're going to mock me. I had some very strange phone calls. Too heavy breathing and a wrong number. <laughs> well, that's more than you usually get. <laughs> Especially on a Tuesday. <laughs> Men's wear. <laughs> oh, hello, Mother. <laughs> it's her. Yes, dear. No, Miss Sewing Basket is in the piano stool, dear. <laughs> She's going to sew a button on my pyjamas. <laughs> now, my pyjamas are in my teddy bear. <laughs> well, it zips up the back. <laughs> I can't find my teddy bear now. <laughs> it's in my canopied bed, peeping over the sheets. <laughs> oh, and listen, if you're going to put the stew in the oven, for goodness sake, take my slippers out. <laughs> All right, bye. Yes, of course I shall be a good boy. That's a funny place to keep your pyjamas, isn't it? Inside a teddy bear. Well, where'd you keep yours? Inside my basil brush. <laughs> There you are, miss. And if you take my advice, you'll remove the elastic before you wash them and then they won't let you down. <laughs> anyway, Mrs. Axelby and me left the pub then. Well, there wasn't much doing, you know. And it was then that we discovered these two men were following us. So we walked on past my house to put them off the scent, you know. Only Mrs. Axelby fell down a couple of times. Well, the pavements are very uneven round my way, and we were wearing our high-heeled ankle straps. So, of course, these two fellas caught up with us. What happened? Well, it turned out I'd dropped my umbrella outside and they were running after us to give it back. <laughs> anyway, they helped me indoors with Mrs. Axelby. Only after I put on the light, they wouldn't stop because they said it hurt their eyes. But they were ever so polite. I mean, when we said goodbye, at the door. They didn't try to kiss us or anything like that. That's unusual. Well, I find that manners are getting better and better. <laughs> no, Mr. Rumbold. Captain Peacock isn't here yet. Yes, I'll ask him to wait. Good morning. Good God. <laughs> I have a ten o'clock appointment with Mr. Rumbold. Oh, yes, yes, he's expecting you. But he's been delayed in the boardroom. Apparently, young Mr. Grace has fallen asleep. They're waiting for him to wake up to adjourn the board meeting. Mm, you're new here, aren't you? Well, I used to work on young Mr. Grace's personal stuff, but after his last heart attack, well, his doctor decided on a change. I'm not surprised. <laughs> seem awfully young to be a captain. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How old do you think I am? Oh, about 55. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't make my father a ship's captain until he was 60. I was in the army. I'm considerably younger than that. Oh, you look much younger. <laughs> and besides, I like your moustache. It's very David Nivenish. <laughs> yes, it has been mentioned before. <laughs> well, looking for the sun. Hello. Am I interrupting anything? Not a thing. I'm just waiting to see Mr. Rumbold. Oh, on the carpet, are you? Certainly not. What year for, then? 
That has nothing to do with you, and I'll put that down and get about your business. You have no jurisdiction over me. I am manual and maintenance. You cannot tell me to get out of this office. There is only one person who could tell me to get out of this office. And until that person tells me to get out of this office, in this office, I shall stay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Harmon, get out. <laughs> Here. He's chatting up your bird. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Peacock, thank you for dropping in. Shall I sit down, sir? No, 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 I shan't keep you on. Uh, this is a FIEO meeting. A what, sir? FYEO, for your ears only. <coughs> <laughs> now, Peacock. Peacock. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, to put it in a nutshell, I'm going. Oh, congratulations and I'm goodbye. Uh, the rumor <laughs> is Harrod's Barber Shop. Is there anything in it? Will you let me finish my sentence? I'm going for one month on a sales and managerial seminar to Swansea. And the reason for the uh, board meeting was to decide who should take over here, which is why I sent for you. Uh, well, I shall, of course, uh, endeavor to give every satisfaction. <laughs> Are you taking your secretary with you? No, I'm leaving her here. Ah, well, she'll be able to show me where everything is. <laughs> Why should she show you where everything is? When I take over the reins. But you're not taking over the reins, Peacock. What am I standing here for, then? I sent for you to tell you that Mr. Granger is taking over. Mr. Granger? <laughs> Don't get upset. You are, of course, the natural heir to the throne, so to speak, and you will ultimately take over in 10, 15, or 20 years' time. I must rush home and tell Mrs. Peacock. <laughs> but just for one month, we're putting Granger here. It'll qualify him for a higher pension, and there's absolutely nothing to do. I know that. <laughs> because I've done it all. You know, the point is, it will appear as if he's being promoted over your head, which, of course, is not the case. Isn't it? You, know, you and I know the truth, but we can't tell anyone else. Oh, uh, I understand. Well, he's a very dear personal friend of mine, so it'll be something for him to look back on in his declining years. <laughs> uh, may I have the pleasure of telling him myself? <laughs> no, I'm afraid you can't. And we'll give the whole show away. You know, I will tell him, and you will look suitably surprised. Hmm? Well, speaking personally, I never have any trouble in getting up in the morning. My puss is just like an alarm clock. <laughs> Every morning at 6.15, it drops its clockwork mouse on me pillow and it won't get over. Not until I've wound it up and had a game under the bed. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, Miss Brahms, are you free? <laughs> the moment, Captain Peacock. Come along, Miss Brown. Uh, Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Lucas, are you free? Yes, we're free, Captain Peacock. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are. We are free, Mr. Humphreys, yes. Mind you, five minutes ago, we wouldn't have been free, would we, Mr. Humphreys? <laughs> we would not have been free, no, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> but we are free now. Mind you, in two minutes, I will be free. Why not, Mr. Lucas? Because it's my coffee break. <laughs> Anybody's coffee break until I say so. Must be frightening to have so much power, mustn't it, Mr. Humphrey? <laughs> Let's hope he uses it for good. <laughs> now, uh, what I have to say concerns you all. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Granger is not here. Well, where is he? <laughs> Well, he's not asleep, is he? Of course he's not asleep, is he, Mr. Luke? No, indeed he is not. He's carrying out an investigation. <laughs> we thought we had a bit of woodworm, and he's listening to see if they're chewing through his drawers. <laughs> the first crunch, he'll leap into action. Get him over here, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Granger, are you free? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Lufus has been telling us about the woodworm in your drawers. <laughs> I 
impertinent monkey. <laughs> I have to announce that I'm going away for one month on a sales and management conference. Are you, sir? Really? Good gracious me. What is a promise? <laughs> During my absence, someone will have to take over my management function in the office, and there has been a board meeting this morning to decide on who should be my temporary successor. Good gracious, how exciting. I wonder who it can be. <laughs> don't pretend you don't know. It's bound to be you. As a matter of fact, it is not, Captain Peacock. What? <laughs> It is, in fact, Mr. Ernest Granger. No. 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 I, I wasn't asleep over there. You know. <laughs> Congratulations. On what? Not being asleep? No. <laughs> You're going to be the manager. He's just said so. What, me? The manager? I must say it comes as a complete surprise. <laughs> well... <clears throat> I think that's everything. Get all your things together, pop into the office, and I'll put you into the picture. Hmm? Yes, of course. Let me be the first to congratulate you, Ernest. Thank you, Stephen. Well, I've got to the foot of our stairs. <laughs> it was discrimination. Everyone knows it should have been you. Oh, no. You have to have one foot in the grave before you move here. <laughs> well, at least, Mrs. Slocum, you're eligible. <laughs> in that office, you wouldn't be out here for five minutes. No, oh, I know. You'd have me inside there for a quick chat and a cuddle, wouldn't you? <laughs> now, come on. Off you go. And don't forget your spare teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Will you take over while I'm away, please, Mr. Humphreys? Be a pleasure, Mr. Granger. <laughs> uh, and uh, w would you be kind enough to telephone Mrs. Granger and break the news to her? You can do that yourself. You've got a phone in your office. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I've got an office, haven't I? Yes. Yes, I, I, I can't quite get used to it. <laughs> Mr. Granger. <laughs> you won't need that in there. Oh, no. Would you care to use it while I'm away, Mr. <laughs> a great honour, Mr. Granger. <laughs> Just think of the thousands of inside legs at that stuff. <laughs> I'll s see you later. <laughs> it's very exciting, isn't it? Glass of water for Captain Peacock? I do not require a glass of water. But I do. It's been a great shock to me. You know, I thought you'd get anything that was going in that office. Mm, especially that new secretary. <laughs> You're taking it so calm. You know, if it was me, I'd be tearing my hair out. Well, that shouldn't take you long. <laughs> that thin bit at the back is where the pillow rubs. <laughs> the rest is growing lush and rampant. <laughs> it may seem strange that Mr. Granger has been promoted over my head, but uh, there is a reason why. Ah, it's because you're Jewish. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, the finger against the side of the nose is a recognised sign for secrecy. My lips are sealed. Well, can we all have a guess? We don't need to guess. He wasn't up to the job and he's trying to cover it up. Oh, yes. You men are all alike. Mr. Slocum was just the same. Do you know, every morning at 9.30 prompt, he went out of the house with his briefcase and his rolled umbrella, and he didn't even have a job. I found him in the park feeding the ducks. <laughs> what did he say to you when you questioned him? He didn't say anything. He just went... <laughs> Hello. Can I have a word with uh, Miss Rumbold, please? Uh, but he's not here, Mr. Grace. Uh, Mr. Granger took over before before lunch. Oh, yes, yes, so he did. I now remember now. Well, uh, I'll speak to him then. Oh, he's still in the chief accountant's office, Mr. Patel. Doing what? Asking for a rise. <laughs> well, he's got the right idea then. <laughs> asking for first-class fares next. He's already done that. <laughs> Aren't you the girl who used to work in my office? Yes, I am, Mr. Grace. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking forward to some time. 
How many times have I told you not to walk across the sales floor when the store is open? Well, I'm sorry, Captain Peacock, but we've run out of helium in the cellar. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Well, if I filled a balloon with it, I could have floated across the floor. <laughs> because across the floor, I have to go. Wines and spirits are on the ground floor. This happened to be the executive drinks trolley and was ordered by the new departmental head, Mr. Hernis Granger who's already snapped you off once for not delivering it before lunch. So if you'll excuse me. <laughs> Rolling down the bar. Oh, I say, I heard that. I do hope Mr Granger doesn't get into trouble for ordering that. Well, perhaps he's going to hold a celebration party. No, oh, it's quite in order. Just one of the perks of his position. Captain Peacock, uh, I wonder if I could have your permission to leave the floor shortly. I wish to ask Mr. Granger for some time off. <laughs> My roots need doing. <laughs> I meant to mention that to you. <laughs> Certainly, Mrs. Slocum, but uh, after me, I too have one or two things at home that need my attention, and I may have to leave early. Oh, of course, it's the Chelsea Fulham replay tonight, isn't it? <laughs> I must say it's useful to have a friend in the camp. I've always found that to be the case. <laughs> well, perhaps Mr. Humphreys and I could uh, ask for a temporary rise. What for? Well, on account of the fact there's only two of us on that counter doing all the extra work. Yes, that's true, but uh, on the other hand, you are sharing Mr. Granger's commission, and therefore it could be said that you're better off. What commission? We've only had two customers all day. <laughs> ah, yes, well, I mean, all the same, there are two of us pretending and looking as though we're doing the work of three. Yes, but I don't think we ought to take advantage of Mr. Granger's good nature. <laughs> Men's well. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Granger. How are you? It's Mr. Humphreys. Do you know, we do miss you. Yes, of course, I will. Captain Peacock, would you go in, please? Good, I told him I wanted to see him after lunch. <laughs> Or I don't drive me. <laughs> and get that skirt on, person. Oh, well, uh, how much longer, Mr. Granger? Make it shorter. <laughs> See who that is. <laughs> it's Captain Peacock. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, yes, yes, I have an appointment with him. All right, send him in. Mr. Granger will see you now. Ah, Stephen. <laughs> How have you been keeping? <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Since this morning, I haven't changed very much. <laughs> oh, don't stand on ceremony, Stephen. Don't sit down. Thank you, Ernest. Uh, do you smoke? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Have a cigarette. <laughs> I can't offer you a drink because it's uh, it's not allowed for uh, junior staff. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Well, it's really very trivial, Ernest, but um, there is a slight domestic crisis on, so if it's all the same to you, I'll be leaving about an hour early tonight. An hour early? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Do I take it you're refusing my request? <laughs> it isn't just me, Stephen. I have to think of the whole of Grace Brothers. Times are very hard. <laughs> just pass the whiskey, will you? <laughs> Yes. It costs are going up and margins are coming down. Yes. Well, um, <coughs> half an hour early, then. No, I, I, I'd like to help you if I could, Steve, but I'm afraid not. <laughs> no, well, well, carry on with the good work out to there. We have a great appreciation of you here at Grace Brothers, you know. <laughs> Stephen. Yes, Mr. Granger? 
put that cigarette out before you go on the floor. <laughs> Time off then? No, I, I suddenly remember that it wasn't this Tuesday. <laughs> Is it next Tuesday? No, actually, I don't need it until Mr. Rumbold comes back. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Captain Peacock. May I go in now? With pleasure, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> no need to bother. He's coming out to see you. Afternoon, Mr. Granger. Good afternoon, Mr. Hambury. Afternoon, Mr. Granger. Hey, what's it like at the top, then, eh? <laughs> May I see both your sales books, please? Our sales books? <laughs> Mr. Rumble never asked to see our sales books. I am not Mr. Rumble. Your sales books, please. <laughs> May I have a word in your shell-like ear? No. <laughs> Go back to your counter. Don't you order me back to my counter. Whether you go back to your counter or go upstairs for your cards is entirely up to you, Mr. Slocum. <laughs> I'll go back to my counter. <laughs> He hasn't heard the last of this. <laughs> Down on your usual total, Mr. Humphreys. Without your support, Mr. Granger, it's only to be expected. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lucas. <laughs> so very messy. <laughs> Figures not clear, handwriting bad, must do better. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Granger, shall I take 100 lines? <laughs> Mr. Lucas, you might be cheeky to me when I was over there, but you will not be cheeky to me when I am standing here. <laughs> You wouldn't think that moving from there to there could change a man's personality, would you? You know, I was in the Navy for a week or two. <laughs> One night I went ashore wearing the captain's cap. You should have heard the commotion that caught. Yeah, but did it, did it fool anybody? Well, it would have done if I'd have been wearing the trousers. <laughs> Oh, yes, Mr. Granger. I wonder, could I have an hour off in the morning for a hairdressing appointment? Uh, my roots need retouching. I'm sorry, Mrs. Slocum, but not in the firm's time. Well, it grows in the firm's time. <laughs> the answer is no, Mrs. Slocum. Half an hour. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, when am I going to get it done, then, you silly old goat? <laughs> you will have plenty of time next week, Mrs. Slocum. You're discharged. <laughs> discharged, yes. And the rest of you had better be on the time tomorrow morning. Or there will be a few more vacancies. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. Slocum. I'm surprised at you being early, considering you've been fired. I only came in early because I want a word with young Mr. Grace. I see he's frightened you to coming in early for a change. Don't be ridiculous. I have to get up early, otherwise the sparrows peck at me gold top. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't anyone going to ask me why I'm early? Right, why are you early? I haven't been to bed yet. <laughs> Sign the book. Ooh. Well, I'm 
glad to see that you're just on time this morning. Good morning, morning Mr. Granger. Granger. <laughs> Shall I take your coat, Mr. Granger? And may I compliment you on your executive bowler? You may, Mr. Slocum. It won't do you any good. <laughs> <laughs> Will you keep your outdoor shoes on, Mr. Granger, or would you like me to crawl off and find your pair of slippers? <laughs> I grabbed a quick cup of coffee at Beppo's. You are late. In spite of my warning, you are late. It's a cue. I shall make an adverse report on you in your record. Now, you all of you started very badly with me yesterday, and you better pull your socks up today, or there's going to be some turf flying. Understand? Yes, Mr. Granger. Who's this arriving late? It's Mr. Rumble! I thought he was away. Morning, Mr. Rumble. Morning, Mr. Rumble. Uh, the, uh, the main water tank burst, flooding the whole building, so they called off the seminar. Now I've returned to resume my normal duties. Carry on, everybody. <laughs> but, Mr. Rumble, what about me? Well, carry on as normal, behind the counter. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, blow. <laughs> I've been a fool. I turned my back on my lifelong friend. Power went to my head, you know. Pass the sugar, would you please? for the best, you know. I wouldn't have sacked you, Mrs. Slocum. You know that. <laughs> of course you do. And I wouldn't have made a report on you, Stephen. Not after all our years of companionship. <laughs> I'm not being sent to Coventry, am I? <laughs> oh, I am. Oh, well. The coffee is bad for the heart, anyway. Especially an empty, broken heart. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> He, he must be taught a lesson. But I feel so sorry for him. The rotten old bastard. <laughs> Supposing something dreadful happens to him on the way downstairs and none of us will have had the chance to say we're sorry. Well, perhaps he has suffered enough. Well, I know I have. <laughs> I'll have to make it up to it. You'll have a job making that hat up. <laughs> Coat with a fur collar, he paid for that out of his holiday money. Don't make it worse. Oh, <laughs> your roots do need doing. <laughs> oh, 
apologise. We have nothing to apologise for. He started it. We all say that we forgive him and that we're all prepared to let bygones be bygones. <coughs> ah, uh, glad I've caught you all. I've just told Granger there's been another change of plan. It seems they've found a hotel in Edinburgh, so they're reconvening the seminar there. <laughs> oh, so it's uh, all as you were with Mr. Granger in charge. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Granger. We were talking to Mr. Rumble, Mr. Granger. I don't want any excuses. I want to see you in my office right away. You understand? Right away. Well, don't all look so miserable. I was going to offer you a drink. <laughs> Shoes pinch, sir. Do bring them back. That's right, sir. You bring them back, and I'll give you the name of my chiropodist. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Lucas. I shall be in my chair, Mr. Humphreys, if you require me. That's right, Mr. Granger. You're going to have 40 wings. Yeah, <laughs> sit and dream about the great trouser sale of 1938. <laughs> Anyway, I said, look, Mother, you come and start with me for a week and perhaps my dad will have come to his senses. Oh. She, well, she arrived. The first thing she does is complain about the sleeping arrangements. You mean she didn't like the settee? No, she took exception to my canopied bed. <laughs> <laughs> the cheek of it. I know. The lace alone cost a hundred pounds. <laughs> and she wouldn't put her teeth in the cut glass goblet. <laughs> And to cap everything, as soon as she'd had her bath and put her curlers in, she insisted on sitting behind the curtains looking at the neighbour. <laughs> and I bet they all thought it was you. <laughs> I shan't share my confidences with you if you're going to mock me. I had some very strange phone calls. Too heavy breathing and a wrong number. <laughs> That's more than you usually get. <laughs> Especially on a Tuesday. <laughs> Men's wear. <laughs> oh, hello, Mother. <laughs> it's her. Yes, dear. No, Miss Sewing Basket is in the piano stool, dear. <laughs> She's going to sew a button on my pyjamas. <laughs> now, my pyjamas are in my teddy bear. <laughs> well, it zips up the back. <laughs> can't find my teddy bear now. <laughs> it's in my canopied bed, peeping over the sheets. <laughs> oh, and listen, if you're going to put the stew in the oven, for goodness sake, take my slippers out. <laughs> All right, bye. Yes, of course I shall be a good boy. That's a funny place to keep your pyjamas, isn't it? Inside a teddy bear. Well, where'd you keep yours? Inside my basil brush. <laughs> 
there you are, miss. And if you take my advice, you'll remove the elastic before you wash them, and then they won't let you down. <laughs> anyway, Mrs. Axelby and me left the pub then. Well, there wasn't much doing, you know. And it was then that we discovered these two men were following us. So we walked on past my house to put them off the scent, you know. Only Mrs. Axelby fell down a couple of times. Well, the pavements are very uneven round my way, and we were wearing our high-heeled ankle straps. So, of course, these two fellas caught up with us. What happened? Well, it turned out I'd dropped my umbrella outside and they were running after us to give it back. <laughs> anyway, they helped me indoors with Mrs. Axelby. Only after I put on the light, they wouldn't stop because they said it hurt their eyes. But they were ever so polite. I mean, when we said goodbye at the door, they didn't try to kiss us or anything like that. That's unusual. Well, I find that manners are getting better and better. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Rumble. Captain Peacock isn't here yet. Yes, I'll ask him to wait. Good God. I have a 10 o'clock appointment with Mr. Rumbold. Oh, yes, yes, he's expecting you. But he's been delayed in the boardroom. Apparently, young Mr. Grace has fallen asleep. They're waiting for him to wake up to adjourn the board meeting. Mm, you're new here, aren't you? Well, I used to work on young Mr. Grace's personal stuff, but after his last heart attack, well... His doctor decided on a change. <laughs> well, you seem awfully young to be a captain. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How old do you think I am? Oh, about 55. <laughs> well, they didn't make my father a ship's captain until he was 60. I was in the army. I'm considerably younger than that. Oh. You look much younger. <laughs> and besides, I like your moustache. It's very David Nivenish. <laughs> yes, it has been mentioned before. <laughs> well, looking for the sun. Hello. Am I interrupting anything? Not a thing. I'm just waiting to see Mr. Rumbold. Oh, on the carpet, are you? Certainly not. What year for, then? That has nothing to do with you, and I'll put that down and get about your business. You have no jurisdiction over me. I am manual and maintenance. You cannot tell me to get out of this office. There is only one person who could tell me to get out of this office. And until that person tells me to get out of this office, in this office, I shall stay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Harmon, get out. <laughs> Here. He's chatting up your bird. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Peacock, thank you for dropping in. Uh, shall I sit down, sir? No, 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 I shan't keep you on. Uh, this is a FIEO meeting. A what, sir? FYEO, for your ears only. <laughs> <laughs> now, Peacock. Peacock. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, to put it in a nutshell, I'm going. Oh, congratulations, sir, and goodbye. Uh, the rumor <laughs> is Harrod's Barber Shop. Is there anything in it? Will you let me finish my sentence? I'm going for one month on a sales and managerial seminar to Swansea. And the reason for the uh, board meeting was to decide who should take over here, which is why I sent for you. Oh. Well, I shall, of course, uh, endeavor to give every satisfaction. <laughs> Are you taking your secretary with you? No, I'm leaving her here. Ah, well, she'll be able to show me where everything is. <laughs> Why should she show you where everything is? When I take over the reins. But you're not taking over the reins, Peacock. What am I standing here for, then? I sent for you to tell you that Mr. Granger is taking over. Mr. Granger? <laughs> Don't get upset. You are, of course, the natural heir to the throne, so to speak, and you will ultimately take over in 10, 15, or 20 years' time. I must rush home and tell Mrs. Peacock. <laughs> but just for one month, 
We're putting Granger here. It'll qualify him for a higher pension, and there's absolutely nothing to do. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> because I've done it all. No, the, the point is, it will appear as if he's being promoted over your head, which, of course, is not the case. Isn't it? You know, you and I know the truth, but we can't tell anyone else. Oh, I understand. Well, he's a very dear personal friend of mine, so... It'll be something for him to look back on in his declining years. <laughs> uh, may I have the pleasure of telling him myself? <laughs> no, I'm afraid you can't. Then we'll give the whole show away. You know, I will tell him and you will look suitably surprised. Hmm? <laughs> well, speaking personally, I never have any trouble in getting up in the morning. My puss is just like an alarm clock. <laughs> at 6.15 it drops its clockwork mouse on me pillow and it won't be over. Not until I've wound it up and had a game under the bed. <laughs> Mr. Slocum, Miss Brahms, are you free? <laughs> at the moment, Captain Peacock. Come along, Miss Brahms. Uh, Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Lucas, are you free? Yes, we're free, Captain Peacock. <laughs> Oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are. We are free, Mr. Humphreys, yes. Mind you, five minutes ago, we wouldn't have been free, would we, Mr. Humphreys? <laughs> we would not have been free, no, Mr. <laughs> but we are free now. Mind you, in two minutes, I won't be free. Why not, Mr. Lucas? Because it's my coffee break. <laughs> anybody's coffee break until I say so. Must be frightening to have so much power, mustn't it, Mr. Humphreys? <laughs> Let's hope he uses it for good. <laughs> Uh, what I have to say concerns you all. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Granger is not here. Well, where is he? <laughs> Good heaven. He's not asleep, is he? Of course he's not asleep, is he, Mr. Luke? No, indeed he is not. He's carrying...